What's up? Welcome to another video. Pardon the noise around. Playset. Let's roll the intro. On today's video, we are going to compare the everyone's favorite, the Agawa Canyon. Um, this is the Boreal 21, I don't know, about a 40 to $60 saw with uh, a silky, smaller blade, but it's curved, so it's uh, a little bit cheaty. Now, like all of these videos go, you're gonna get my opinion. I can't convey my experience uh, and my what I'm feeling physically through video, so you're just gonna have to check it out yourself and uh, decide for yourself, but I'm gonna give you my opinion on the matter, so. Let's get down to business, shall we? All right, from here on out, we're working here. You're not gonna have to look at my fugly mug. Let's move these logs back and get a better perspective here. So, uh, like I said, the Boreal 20, come I mean, here, you. Why do things right when you can do things easy? The Boreal 21, this is by Agoa Canyon. I think it's Canadian made. Not 100% sure on that. Bought one off their website after I seen it being used, a few different um, other YouTubers using it and loving it. Um, now, I use this thing in a lot of my videos, and I used it for quite a while. The, uh, and, and when you don't have a silky saw or, or a different saw to use, um, what have you got to compare to, right? So it, it did what it was supposed to do, and it cut wood, and I, I liked that. Um, now, it comes with this blade, and by the lovely, well-kept patina, you can see on there, you can see how well I kept this blade. Uh, I did. I used this one until I saw that they had an alternate. This one. This is called the. I think the Rancher Two. Um, it's got bigger teeth that are differently shaped and they're spaced and it, it's a. It has a different um, profile to it. I don't know if you can see down that saw blade or not, but. They'll, you'll have teeth in series here. Let's see if I can get a good view of this here. Because this is, a, like it or not, important to, to how saws function. So, here's that blade. Now, a normally, in, like a carpenter's blade, the teeth will be offset, meaning that every other tooth, you'll have a tooth that is slightly bent that way, then the next one slightly bent that way, and that is to create a wide enough cut that the rest of the blade can then follow through without snagging or, or binding on the wood that it's passing through. Uh, on this one, you have, it's, it's different. If you look down there, you do see that a couple of the teeth are offset, but you'll have, um, if I look straight down, you'll have two that are straight. Uh, they don't have any offset at all. And then you'll have a, a larger gap, like right here. And then you'll have one blade or tooth that sits off to one direction. And then you'll have two that are, that are set straight up and down. And then a wider gap and a tooth that's set off in the other direction. You can see that repeating pattern all the way down the saw blade. See the two teeth that are close together, a gap, two teeth that are close together, a gap, and it's in, I don't know. See there's two that are close together and there's a gap on either side of those teeth. And then the blade itself, one of those tooth will be just slightly bent outward in either right or left um, direction. So that, that creates this, that solves a problem. I'm gonna pull this back out. It solves a problem when you're cutting through wood. Now obviously I'm not gonna cut this log all the way, but when you're slicing through wood on the log, you'll see that if I try to use the very tip, it's not gonna work well simply because I'm not using offset teeth very well. Um, so I'll maybe using one going one way and one going the other, but if I then use the entirety of the saw and cut, it slices much better. Now you have to use this saw with the intent to cut. And what I mean by that is you go forward and you give it some downward pressure and you come back and you give it downward pressure. That way it can cut on bush both, blah, 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 blah. it will cut on both the push and the pull. Um, and also with the handle, this thing is very uncomfortable. This starts to give you blisters in no time. 
um, it's just the way it folds together. So use it with gloves and hold it down here near the bottom. That way the force of your arm is being directed into the blade in a, the most straight manner. If you try to hold it up here or in the middle, it's going to tip on you and it's going to just, it'll be a pill to you. So, now what do I think of this blade? Um, it's worlds better than this one. I don't know what the intended purpose of this one was. Pause. Alarm going off. I don't know what the intended per tended. Ugh, I'm really having trouble today. Intended use for this was. Maybe it's only for dry wood. Maybe it's only for wet wood. But it is literally like a half or a quarter as efficient as this blade. So if you're going to get this saw, you got to get it with this blade. This cuts both green and dry wood and hard. Hard wood and soft wood's a lot better than this thing. Like I see, it's it's just fit for gathering rust. So. I don't know what you want to do with your blacksmith, make it into something. Now comparing it to the silky saw, silky teeth um, are flash hardened, meaning that there's a device that comes along these teeth. Zoom in again. There is a device that comes along these teeth and it heats them up to a critical temperature, usually about 14 to 1500 degrees, and right underneath it is a water jet. That, and that So as you've got that heat, critical heat, it loses no temperature before the water jet right after it's just freezes it right up, cools it right down. That creates an exceptionally hard set of teeth. Um, and the Rockwell hardness, this is above 60 to 65, possibly more. It's going to cut on only the pull. So when you pull on this blade, that is when it cuts. The push just helps clear the cut. Pull. And your push should just be enough to move the saw forward. When you pull, that's when you give it the force. And you don't even need to give, especially with a curved blade, especially with a curved blade, you don't even need to give it a lot of backward pull because you're, the angle at which you're pulling this wants to be in line with your arm. And that blade sits off like that. So when you pull it, the force of your pull drives that tip into the wood because it wants to go straight. It doesn't want to curve, it wants to go straight. So that it's grabbing a lot harder up here on the front side blade. Normally that part of the blade is useless. A lot of times you'll hear people using one of these and they'll they'll pull it and you'll hear it go bum 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 bum. It'll bump. And that's because it does not want to cut. Um, you'll also hear it bind. People have a lot of trouble getting these things started because that blade wants to bend, it wants to twist, it wants to do all kinds of things and it's held in tension so it wants to, it'll bounce. And you'll hear it when people use it, bump, 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 so they're losing a lot of their cutting power, um, especially on a, on a pole and on a flexible material. And you, you'll hear it as, as someone cuts an object. Uh, And these bind up because you can't push this thing in a perfectly straight line. When you're pushing it, it's going back and forth like that, which is cause that's why the back of this blade, you'll see it there, is being shined up. It's because that's grabbing, especially when it's being twisted. So my impression of this is it's a useful saw. Um, I have a hard time recommending it because I have literally had this sitting in my shelf for the past year unused. Since I got a, a fixed blade silky saw, this is 90% of what I used to cut, and it'll cut far better than this saw. Uh, that is my impression of the saw. I, I, people will do these tests where they'll like grab a piece of wood and they'll cut it so many times. Sure, let's go ahead and do it just for the kicks and giggles. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There you go inch and a half long piece of wood cut with seven -ish strokes right so let's grab this one and we'll even get something smaller to cut or not we could cut the same piece but it doesn't have the i'm must up my legs so i'm not doing the palmer's vice or anything weird so we can then cut this one oh come on one two three four five six seven we're also doing seven smaller piece but it also cuts on the pulse, that was technically 14 cutting strokes, or that was just seven cutting strokes. So, just a thing to think about. If you don't think that was fair, maybe we'll do another one here. It's gonna be awkward because I have to step on it to hold it, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 
So it's gonna take you more cutting strokes. Does this have its place though? I think so. Um, if, if this blade breaks, I'm done. There's nothing I can do. If anything on this breaks, I, I'm very, very limited. Like, it's very, very common for a silky blade to get bound up and break on a push. You'll see it on every single YouTuber. I've never done it myself, but every single, most every single outdoor YouTuber has broken a silky blade. Um, this one, it's difficult to break because it's very, very flexible. And even if you break the, the saw part, you can take the blade itself, excuse me, you can take the blade itself and you can make a, a, a wooden jig to hold a stick, a couple pieces of wood, a dowel in here. You slice it, you slice a piece of wood, you place it in there, you hold it with a dowel, you do the same thing on the other end, and then you can use um, any type of paracord or whatnot to bring this blade into tension so you can use it. So if the frame on this one breaks, you can still use the blade. And the chances you break in this blade, um, very slim as you can see. If I were to do that, if I were to bend that saw past about there, it will snap. Um, this cuts better. I'm sold on fixed blades. Uh, the next saw I'm gonna buy is gonna be one that's about that long, much longer than this. It's gonna be a fixed blade silky saw. I just, I'm absolutely in love with these saws. So I do think that if you're gonna buy a saw, um, I would go for a silky. It's got a smaller profile. Um, I wouldn't go for the um, Baco Laplander. It's, it does cut on the push and the pull. It's a smaller saw, but again, it's not nearly as efficient as a silky. It's light and it's cheap. Those are the two pros for it. But again, like I said, um, my opinion, I give it to you as my opinion. You make up your own decision. But as far as, as what it goes, this blade right here, the, the, Ag, Ag, the Boreal 21, this will wear out quicker, but even if it breaks, then that is very unlikely the blade will break. But if the frame breaks, you can still still jig up, bush craft up uh, a mechanism to cut wood with it, where if this breaks, you're in bad, you're in bad waters because it's, it's um, lights out for that saw and, and you're stuck. So. If you know how to use one, they're not hard to use. You just don't use a lot of force going forward and you pull back. You just pull straight back like you own it and this blade will last you a lifetime. Especially with how good they, they keep make these things. Japanese make some real good steel. So there you go. That is my opinion. That's my that's my video. You do with that information what you want, and I will see you guys on the next video.